Alright. Hey, my name's Wire Guitars. My bed is made. And I want to show you guys, or I'd rather talk to you guys, a little bit about bounty runes today. So, the most important thing that you need to know about bounty runes is that the first set spawns and the boat sounds spawns two bounty runes on both sides in the river that are double what they normally are worth. They, these ones give 100 EXP and 100 gold. I guess not technically double, because they always scale up. But for the purposes of this conversation, they're worth a lot, and so you need to get them. And so I'm going to try to show you guys how to get them this game. First things first, I am a cheating bastard, and this is a cheat game. So I'm going to give myself infinite gold, and I'm going to give myself a blink dagger. Um, this is just so I can walk around quicker. But basically, what you need to know, I guess probably what you already know, is that this rune, it's going to spawn right here at the zero minute mark. And this rune is going to spawn right here at the zero minute mark as well. Are worth a lot. you got to get them. They're very, very important. Turn the music down just a wee bit. Alright. So, I'm going to give you guys a few tips about like how to, how to go about getting them. Um, the first and foremost, we'll talk about right now, don't skill your first ability until you need it. Okay? Most, if not probably all of you guys have all seen um, an Earthshaker like this. You guys have all seen the Earthshaker that just like, he spawns in the game and then he just, you know, start, well, Fissure is probably the correct decision, but like he just, he starts Fissure and he just to troll you guys, he just like goes over here and does this and he just derps around the whole game or something like that. Or my personal favorite Earthshaker is the one that starts after Shock, right? And he just leaves the fountain and you're just like, dude, what are you going to do? What are you going to provide at the, at the, at the minute one room, right? Don't start your first ability, okay? Every situation is different, but generally speaking, you're going to want the, you're going to want the one that provides the most crowd control. But again, every situation is different, so don't start your level one ability. Generally speaking, you guys know I play your spirit. Probably a lot of you probably also play your spirit and want to know this. Um, should probably start rolling boulder. It's two seconds as opposed to a 0.75 second stun and a 2.5 second silence, which Eh, silences at level one are kind of eh, right? This is a two second, eighty percent movement speed slow. So it's it's generally speaking, it's the best. If we create a hero right now, lion, and then we put him on the enemy team, and then we have him kind of walk over here, and I roll into him. Watch, oh my god, a hundred movement speed down from two ninety, like, and that was that lasted forever. Also, it does the most damage. Oh my god, <laughs> rip. I'm trying to control two heroes at once. Yeah, it does a hundred damage as opposed to your other abilities, which only do fifty. Sure, it only affects one hero, and technically speaking, you still shouldn't start your first ability because sometimes having the silence is better, or not having the silence is better. Most times, not having the silence in favor of a stun or a slow is better, but um, sometimes having the kick is better because if we create five lions, if you ever have a situation where they're just like lined up like this, then start your stun. Because holy value, right? I'm just kidding. Um, still, it should be situational. But being able to stun everybody like that could be amazing. But anyways, and they're all going to go feed Roche. Um, anyways, how to go about getting the first bounty run. Oh my god, I don't want to die myself. We're just feeding the Rush. Alright. So, we talked about not skilling your first ability. Very important. Um, a lot of you guys don't do it. That's why I say it. But um, seriously, do not start your first ability until you need it. Secondly, understand the game, okay? Now let's talk about this. This is going to take a, a few minutes, so I, I want to talk about this in a kind of an esoteric way, okay? Understand that if you're on the Radiant team, you should probably be going for the bottom bounty rune, and the Dire should probably be going for the top bounty rune, okay? I'm a 5k player. I can't demonstrate that. Oh my god. This is stupid. I'm a 5k player, so, you know, take my word for what it's worth, um, but over my extensive pub research um, of, of doing many a tests, Kappa, uh, I know that Generally speaking, you want to you want to go for the rune that's closer to your safe lane, and the off laner just kind of gets fucked, right? Off laner, pick a hero like Earth Spirit or Tusk, who um, doesn't really need or doesn't even really want to fight over the bounty rune, right? To create hero Tusk. I, I you know I know what you're saying. Tusk doesn't want to fight over the bounty rune. What are you stupid? Uh, Tusk, if he goes in the off lane, he wants to do something like this where he blocks off his creeps. You can do it better than this. I'm just trying to demonstrate. Tusk can do ice shards. Earth Spirit can pull creeps. Um, other heroes can do other things. Lone Druid or Nature's Prophet can disrupt the creep wave by sending their bear or their trees there. They have things to do, okay? Pick heroes that have things to do and, and are good in the offlane. Look at this, Tusk can even block creeps. Anyways, if you're in WTF mode, Kappa. Um, anyways, uh, don't pick offlaners that, like, you know, absolutely need a bounty rune or, like, an alchemist or some stupid shit like that. Or, more importantly, don't pick offlaners who, uh, who just suck in the offlane, right, and can't do anything to get the creep equilibrium near their tower, right? If, if, you're picking, if you're picking, like, Necro, I've seen Necro offlane, and it just doesn't work. If you're picking heroes like Necro, and you can't really do a whole lot at the minute one bounty rune, 
um, and you can't really do a whole lot as an offlaner in general, then you're probably picking a bad offlaner and you're probably gonna lose a lot of your games. But like Broodmother, Broodmother can throw a web here at the bounty rune and then still have enough time to go up here and throw another web down. So that means unless the enemy starts sentries or um, dust, they can't even really kill her or do anything about her or they have a Zeus, right? So you can just sit here, spam click, keep pushing the S button. I'm doing it with my finger right now. I, I know you can't see it. Keep pushing the S button so your hero never technically auto attacks. You can also do this with Bounty Hunter and Ricky too. But keep pushing the S here, uh, S button so you're, you don't break invisibility, but you still click on the bounty rune so that you can hopefully get the bounty rune, right? And there's a key binding for that, and I can probably link it in the video description to make it so that you have the auto clicker, okay? I'm not actually using an outside program. I'm using the internal program. It's something like um, you go to the console and then type like a slash bind or something like that, bind F5 or some crap like that. I'll put it in the description for you guys. But basically, get that level one bounty rune. Um, you can do it as some off laners. You can do it as most safe laners. Or I guess I should say most safe laners plus two supports plus one mid hero. That's four heroes on a rune should be able to get the, the rune for that side, right? If you want to do an aggressive contestion, contestion, con like a contest for the for the bounty rune, as if you as if to say that you feel like you're level, like maybe you have um, a coddle or um, a pudge or something like that, and you feel like you can be aggressive and get both runes, then you can go about that in a, in a very intelligent way. Okay, the way that you do that depends on the heroes. But the way that you do that is you probably, you swap sides, swap sides, you switch sides, you get the uh, offlaner to go take the easy rune, because your team is gonna, your enemy team is gonna metagame. The metagame as it stands right now, most intelligent people know which side of the rune, I'm telling you this, but most most people that are intelligent know that this rune is pretty much the radiant, and this, pretty, this is pretty much the dire. And that's for the reason that I stated earlier, okay? This is closer to the dire safe lane, so they don't have to like worry about, you know, screwing up their lane. And this is closer to the radiant safe lane, so they don't have to worry about screwing up their lane. But if you want to go aggressive and contest it, then you would send um, like a, probably a maximum of two heroes to secure your safe lane rune. The reason, again, like like I said, you don't need to send too many heroes to secure your safe lane rune because you can metagame them because you know that the Dire will likely not send that many either unless they're trying to be aggressive. And so instead, Radiant would send like four heroes top and you would get the rune because you're going aggressive. And, and you never go aggressive for no reason, okay? If you have like anti-mage, uh, Juggernaut's a, a bad example because he's actually good, but if you have like anti-mage, what's a bunch of like really terrible, I don't know. Like if you have five anti-mages on your team, don't go aggressive. Don't send all five AMs up here just so they can blink out once they realize how dangerous the situation is, okay? Pick heroes, if you want to go aggressive, pick heroes like Coddle or Bane or just heroes that can provide a lot or like Earthshaker or Tusk that can provide a lot to um, the level one bounty so that that way you can be aggressive and still get the rune because you don't want to go aggressive needlessly, okay? A lot of people think that the more aggression you apply in the game, in this, in a game like this, uh, the, the more you win. Well, that's not always true. Sometimes aggression can be a bad thing, if you're, especially if your team isn't necessarily made out, cut out for it. So yeah, um, just review really quickly what we talked about. Um, if you want to get those level one bounty runes, you um, don't start your first ability until you leave the fountain. It's obvious. Use the key binding that I told you about um, that I'll have in the description to link. I have it on my F5 button, but you can have it on whatever button to make it so you can get this auto clicker thing kind of going on. It's within the game. It's not you're not through using third party or anything like that. It's really really safe. Don't worry. You won't get. You probably won't get banned. I guess I don't technically know for a fact that you won't get banned, but I, I haven't been banned yet. Um, and pick invis heroes. You know, use this auto clicker and pick invis heroes. Don't start your level one skill. Or pick aggressive heroes and go for the aggressive uh, take capture on their bounty rune. Um, there's something like a 60% chance to win, like a 60% win rate that pro teams have if they get the if they get both level one bounty runes. That's how serious it is to get level one bounty runes. And granted, that's in a pro game, um, and I don't really know the reason for that. I know that you'd give one to your mid, obviously. Always give the level one bounty rune. Uh, generally speaking, unless you have like an alchemist on your team, give the level one bounty rune to your mid, and especially if your if your alchemist is your mid. Because having that burst of EXP is really nice to give a level advantage over your opponent, which is especially important in mid. And then also more importantly, it usually brings mid laners closer to their bottle, which is which is super good for mid. Um, but what was I gonna say? Yeah, it's like a 60% win rate or something like that. I knew that it, I know that it was that way at the start of uh, 6.84, I think, which is when they made the change to the bounty rooms thing. Is yeah, at the start of 6.84 uh, in pro games, there was like a 60% win rate for teams that got both bounty rooms. Just to demonstrate how important it is to get those bounty runes, right? It's really, really good. Bounty runes are very strong, especially in the early game when they're both worth 100 gold and 100 EXP. So anyways, that's all I really want to talk about. I want to keep this video brief. But hopefully I gave you some useful tips that you can use to um, dominate your pubs. And yeah, I made my bed. And I think I showed that, but I'm going to show it one more time. It's made, so you can't get mad at me. Alright, peace out. You guys have a good day.